Lee here from Play Guitar Academy. If you're a beginner and you'd love to play some slow, meaningful blues, but you can tell that that one pattern that you know, it doesn't sound like any of the slow blues songs that you've heard. This is the video for you. I've got five very simple but very smart blues licks. These are gonna make you sound like you know what you're doing. And as always, I teach it a little bit differently. I don't just show you how to play them, but I tell you why each one of them works. And to make the most of these licks, grab my big four scale pattern worksheet, the link's above, and you can start to understand the scale pattern system, and you can play these licks anywhere you want all over the fretboard. Okay, let's get started with the licks. Today I'm playing in the key of G and I'm using the minor pentatonic in the blues scale. Okay, let's take a look at this lick. Here we start on the fifth fret of the G string and we're gonna bend this up a full step. That's taking a C note and bending it up to sound like a D note. Okay, especially beginners, a lot of time we bend the notes and we don't have a target. We don't end up somewhere. So it's a good idea to play the note that you're trying to bend up to. So if this is your note C and you're gonna bend it a full step, which is two frets, you're gonna to try to make it sound like a D. So maybe play a D note first, so you can get that sound in your head, and then bend the, the C note, take your second finger, put it behind your third, and slide across. There's another D right there I could match it to. Until they match perfectly, and then you know exactly, you'll get the feel for it, and then you'll know exactly how far to bend. So we have this note first, C going to a D. So next we play a C note all by itself. Then we play a B flat, which is the minor third in the key of G. This is an important note. This is what makes it sound sad. And then we finish off by going a half step up, taking the minor third and moving it up one fret. Now, if you know the scale pattern that we're basing this off of, You notice that this note we just played here at the fourth fret, the major third, it's not in that scale pattern. And here's why we're gonna use it. Because the chord that's usually played over in the key of G, G blues, is a dominant seventh chord. What you see is written G7, right? That chord has this note in it. So when we play blues and we play the minor pentatonic scale over top of that chord, there's a rub. We have the minor third in our scale, but the major third in our chord. So we get a little, uh, a little of a tense sound. It doesn't work perfectly, which sounds good to our ears. But when we do play that note, it matches the chord perfectly and it really makes the lick sound strong. It makes you sound like you understand the notes that are in this chord and that you're using that to your advantage. It makes the, the listener feel confident that you have something important to say. So in this lick, we went from C to D. That's the fourth going to the fifth, then C, which is the fourth, then the minor third. This is the note that's in the scale, but not in the chord. And then it goes to the fourth fret, which is the major third. This is our B note. So we're going from the scale sad to the chord happy. And it sounds really, really nice. Next, we're going to go back to the G string. And now we're gonna go up to the sixth fret. I like to take my third finger here and move up one, and then come back and then finish the phrase off. So this note here, if we add that to the minor pentatonic scale, we're gonna get something really, really neat. I'll go through the scale. So here's our minor pentatonic and I'm gonna add the blue note in. Our tonic note is G, that's at the third fret. Uh, then we have our B flat, that's our minor third, that's our sad note. Then we have a C, which is the fourth degree of the scale. Now we have a C sharp. This is our blue note. It's the note in between the fourth and the fifth degree of the scale, in between the C and the D here. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, So you'll hear some people call it the sharp four or the flat five. Same note, two different ways of saying it. On to the fifth, on to the flat seventh, and back to the tonic again. Tonic, minor third, fourth, and then here is a note we're playing in this lick. This is fret number six, uh, and that's our blue note, our sharp four, back to the four. Uh, That's our C note. And then we have our third fret here, which is the B flat, and then back to the tonic. So if I put both sides of this lick together, we have. Again. Okay, this lick is really cool. And this is gonna help you when the chords change in a blues. You start a blues backing track off, you've got the same chord for four measures, and then it changes. But when you keep playing your minor pentatonic scale, I bet you have found that you 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 want to play something different. You want something else has to happen, and you're not getting that with your uh, scales. So this is going to get you that. This is going to help you outline the new chord when it comes in. First thing I'm doing is I'm taking the third fret on the G string and the B string, barring that with my first finger, and I'm going to bend it up. I'm going to bend down towards the floor slightly a little bit. I have written quarter step here, but I don't even think it's that far. We're just taking it slightly out of tune, slightly sharp to give it a little bit of attention. And then we go to the G note, which is our tonic note. And then we go down to a, an F, which are, is our flat seventh. This is all in minor pennant tonic so far. And then we move back one more fret. That note is not in our scale pattern. That's a note we should learn a little bit here. So uh, this is an E, an E note. Uh, And we continue on from that E note to a C. And we're going to let that ring. And then we're going to tuck our third finger underneath here on the G string third fret. Now look at the shape that this makes. It's it's very similar to a ninth chord. It's the it's a it's a, a the bare bones of a dominant seventh chord. A C seven chord. And if you've ever looked at twelve bar blues, you know that the G seven after four measures it goes to a C seven. So this lick has taken us to the next chord. It's outlined the new chord that came in. You might be thinking, hey, I'm just a beginner. Isn't that a little bit farther along than I need to be? But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep you from getting into a rut. One of the biggest ruts I find from people who have been beginners for a long time, career beginners, is they think that if I just play the scale pattern in the key of G, it's going to work out. And that is just not the truth. Every chord has certain notes that are strong to it. And as those chords are playing and they're changing behind you, if you reference those chords, you're going to start to hear that you sound a lot like some of the things that you listen to online. And lick number three, this is just a pretty common blues lick with a little bit of a twist here. So we're gonna start with our C note again and the full step bend like we did before. Then we go to that note. It's a C going to a D when we bend and the next note is a D all by itself. And normally in a blues, you would hear the high string at the third fret. That's a typical blues lick. But in this lick, we overshoot that. Instead of going to that third fret, which is what is commonly heard, We go to a note higher in the scale and then come back to that note. We overshoot and then come back. It gives the ear something to latch onto other than something that you've heard over and over and over again. And then we end this one very similar to the very first lick that we started for. We have the C bend up to the D. Then we're going to play the C. So that's the fourth going to fifth and then to the fourth and then the minor third right from the scale pattern and then right to the tonic note the strong note here so 
So in look number four, we have something very different and you should really pay attention to this, especially as a beginner. So we're gonna start off with our first finger on the third fret of the B string. Uh, and that is our D note, that's the fifth degree of the scale. And then we're gonna play the next note up in the scale pattern, that's the sixth fret. And that's our F, that's the, the flat seventh in the scale. Then we go to the G note, our strong note. But now you would think, okay, I'm going up the scale, one, four, one. You would think, well, the next note in the scale is your, your fourth finger on the sixth fret. But that's not what's written here. We go to the fifth fret. We've added a new note in. Uh, this would be an A, and this is the second degree of the scale. Sometimes you'll hear it uh, called the ninth degree of the scale. Two ways of saying the same note. So there's our second. Now, why in the world would we do that? Well, these licks are meant to be put together so you could play this over an entire blues progression. You look at our five chord. In the blues, we have a G dominant seven, a C dominant seven, or a C nine in this case, and then a D dominant seven. In this case, a D nine. I'm putting my fingers barred all the way across the fifth fret. The high note in that chord, the D nine, is this note that we're playing, the A. So this lick is for that part of the chord progression. So whenever we get to the five chord in a blues progression, in this key from G, there will be the D seven, I'm gonna go for that note. It's gonna make it sound like my note choices were strategic because I have outlined this chord. I have taken the cool note from the chord and made it part of my melody. And you can hear that. The second part of this lick, we have a C, going bending up to D, but then coming back to the C going to the, the third fret, which is our B flat, and then back up to the C. Well, that is in the 12 bar blues, you'll have the five chord going to the four chord and then back to the one chord. So this is gonna fit perfectly. That's a C note and it's gonna fit perfectly over the C chord. So having those together sounds great over the D, sounds great over the C. Again, hear how they fit both of those chords. Okay, in lick number five, we're gonna round this whole thing out. We're gonna do a little double stop work here. So we're gonna take our third finger, put it at the fifth fret of the G string, and then tuck our pinky underneath on the B string at the same fret. Uh, so these two notes here, these are part of a C bar chord, uh, the four chord there, and we're gonna bend them up a half step, and then back. So that's like going up, that will be our flat seventh and our blue note. So we're going into the blue note, blue scale a little bit. Back to five and it's a cool sound. And then we're gonna finish that off with a double stop at the third fret. Those are notes directly from the scale pattern. So, and then to our tonic note, our G note, our strong note right there. And this you would play at the end of a blues turnaround. So this is a very strong, resolving lick. So remember I told you that we can play all these licks in a row and have a really nice solo over a 12 bar blues. Let me show you how we're gonna do this. We're gonna take the first two licks. We're gonna repeat both of those two times to fit over the chord progression. So here we go, one, two, three. G7, G7, again. Here's the second one. Hear how it took us to the C7? Back to the one chord. Five chord. Pete, how about that?
Thanks for playing along with me today. Make sure to experiment with these. Experiment with what you have learned. You are already one step closer to your dreams with the guitar. And if you like these licks and want to find out even more about them, the day after this video comes out, I have a podcast episode where I'm going to go into detail about all of the key takeaways from these powerful licks. I will link to it right here as soon as that one comes out. And thanks to all of our Academy members over at PlayGuitarAcademy.com who are tearing into the tab and guitar profiles from this lesson right now. Don't forget to download my free Big Four Scale Worksheet. This is going to help you master all of these things and make it easier for you to play these licks all over the fretboard. And as always, let me know what you think in the comments. Have a great practice and I will see you in the next lick video. Bye-bye.